What up, family? Just want to drop this word. God's punishment, notice I say air quotes, is really God's pr preparation. Uh, let me show you what I mean. But before we do that, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word, and I thank you for the impact that you will have. Have your way, Holy Spirit, and use me as an instrument. In Jesus' name, amen. What do I mean by God's punishment? Sometimes in our life, we go through adversities and we think God's forgotten us. It's like, God, you showed me this prophetic word, this dream, this vision. You spoke that word over my life. Why isn't it happening right away? And it's because God has to prepare you before he takes you to that position. God can't bless you in that position without your character being in line with his. Um, just like the story of David and Goliath, when, or King David. He was anointed to be the king, but he didn't become a king immediately. Right after he became king or anointed king by the, the prophet, he went back to being a, she a shepherd, cleaning up sheep dung, taking care of the sheep, all that. And then sometime later, he stumbled upon his uh, destiny shifting when he faced Goliath. But And then when he faced Goliath, he told the king, I can take on this giant because I've been prepared by facing the lions and the bears. And so that time in the wilderness, it's really about perspective. He could have looked at it like, God, you've, you've delayed my destiny. God, you've abandoned me. You've all this, these things. And God was sitting there preparing him for his destiny. And that's what he does for us. He prepares us. In those quiet moments, that's opportunity to draw closer to the Lord. In those quiet moments, that's the opportunity to cultivate what he's giving you so that when he opens the door, you're ready. I believe God won't open doors until he knows we're ready because he doesn't want us to fall on our face, especially because we're representing him. The Bible says an inheritance gained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. And God is a God that likes quality. And what he will do is he will make you work longer to prolong you from getting where you are just so that when you get there, um, you're on time. I guess what I'm trying to say is instead of him rushing you to get somewhere where you're ill-equipped and not prepared to deal with what comes with that, he will prepare you so long term so that when you get there, you can maintain that position. Because God understands that adversity is a part of life and you're going to face adversity as he promotes you. Now, the Lord, the Lord does say, the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. But the enemy doesn't enjoy seeing God's children be promoted. And so he'll try to attack us. And so God is like, I want you to be equipped. I want you to be familiar with your word, familiar with me. And I want you to be ready so that when these attacks come, you are ready to handle it. And then also the intimacy with God in those private times is important. Because when we get elevated, the temptation to, to uh, focus on those possessions, status, accolades can come into play. And before long, we make those things into idols and prioritize them over the Lord. And so God will take time and give us time in the wilderness so that he can prune our hearts, prune us like a, a plant, a gardener prunes a plant, cuts in certain areas so that they grow right. God will cut us in certain areas, break us in certain areas so that we can grow right and mature to the Christ-like quality he has called us to be. So the next time you think you're in, under God's punishment, look at it differently. It could be that God is preparing you for your destiny. When Joseph was called to the second position under Pharaoh, he was shown years in advance that he would be in an exalted position, but he had no idea he'd be thrown in the well by his brothers, sold into slavery, lied on by his boss's wife, thrown into prison, and then finally he gets elevated. He didn't know about all that, but God used every one of those situations to develop his character and prepare him for where he was taking him. And he does that to his children because he wants us to represent him well. So he does what he has to. He helps us crucify our flesh, purges us, cleanses us, sanctifies us, purifies us, so that when the time comes for elevation, we are ready. So I encourage you today, re-look at your situation and ask yourself, am I really being punished by the Lord? Punished? Or is this really God's way of pre uh, preparing me for my destiny? Before, G before Joseph went to the palace, he first had to go in the pit. Then he went to the he went, to, yeah, he went to the pit, then he went to Potiphar's house, then he went to the prison, then he went to the palace, all in peace. My point is, God has a plan in your life. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. If you know him, you love him, and you're called according to his purpose, then even the difficult times you're going through, there's a purpose in that. He's a master chef, and he does not leave anything uncooked or unused. Just like chefs in the kitchen where they may cook everything, cut everything up, but everything is used, God uses everything, every situation, good and bad. So I encourage you today, look again. Now, if there's anybody watching and you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father, the only way to get right with the Father is through the Son, and this is through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord. If you believe he died on the cross and that God the Father raised him back from the dead, you will be saved from the penalty of your sins. So just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. 
I believe God the Father raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart, my Lord and my Savior. Doing that, you crossed over from death to life. Your name is now written in the book of life, and you are not going to hell, but you're going to heaven. And there is a celebration in heaven because you've crossed from death to life. You'll be persecuted at times because you love the Lord. But the wonderful thing is God will be with you through all that and he will elevate you and help you through everything you're going through. Be of good cheer for he has overcome the world. He has a house made of many mansions. If he did not, he would not have told you so. He has a house he's preparing for you at a heavenly home. I recommend you get in a Bible-based church and watch God transform your life. Uh, follow me on Daryl Alder II at YouTube, um, Daryl Alder on Facebook, or Craig underscore Alder underscore DC on Instagram. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.